my clock. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, I'd love to hear from you in the chat box as we kind of get started here about uh, what you're hoping to get out of this session, why you joined in. My name is Leanna Aker. I'm an associate program director with the uh, School of Education, and I am based out of the Tacoma, Washington campus, where I work with pre-service teachers and teachers seeking endorsements to their certificate. Um, I did this session yesterday. It was very fast-paced. I hope that you all enjoy it and get a chance to interact with some of these sites. So what I'm hoping that you will take out of this presentation is that you will uh, have a chance to interact with at least two online tools that I'm going to show you tonight. Um, evaluate the pros and cons of each tool in your particular context, whether you're teaching online or in person. The title of the presentation was about tools for an online environment, but I think there's lots of applications no matter what your teaching context is. Um, and then I'm hoping you can select a tool that you'd like to try in a future course and that you get some ideas for that as we continue forward. So what I want to uh, talk about tonight are three or four specific tools, Padlet, Quizlet, Google Docs, and MindMap. And I want to do, 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 do. do a little bit of interactivity right now. And I'm going to ask some questions and ask you to raise your hand if that applies to you. And then when I'm done doing that, I'll ask you to put your hands down for the next question. So the first question I have is, have you heard of Padlet? If you've heard of Padlet, raise your hand. And that's in the, the center bottom of your screen down there. So if you've heard of Padlet, if you can raise your hand. You can also kind of follow along what people are um, uh, contributing to that conversation. If you click on the little um, person icon in the bottom right hand corner, you can see who has their hand up and who doesn't. OK, so let's lower our hands on that one. Uh, who has heard of Quizlet? Raise your hand if you've heard of Quizlet. So I'm seeing just a couple, three people. Okay. Uh, this one should have more. Who's heard of Google Docs? <laughs> okay. So next question, let's lower our hands on that one. Oh, great. Lots of people. Um, what I want to know is, have you used Google Docs to have uh, students collaborate with each other? If you've used Google Docs, have students collaborate with each other? Super. So that's also quite a big group. Maybe, looks like maybe seven folks or so, eight maybe. Um, I'm hoping that you'll get some other ideas for that tonight. So we're going to show you a couple features of Google Docs that you might not have heard of. And the last one that's a little more obscure, you can put your hands down now. Uh, if you've heard of MindMap, raise your hand. Okay, so that would be nobody that I can see here. That's sort of a mind mapping tool. So let's dig in here. Uh, I want to start with Padlet. Padlet is sort of like an online, online sticky note site um, that you can type notes in, you can draw things, you can add pictures. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a sample Padlet that I did with a science course and I was asking them to brainstorm types of assessments that they knew about. So what I'm going to do in this whole presentation is we're going to be shifting back and forth between uh, websites and this PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do is just paste the link to this particular one in the chat box so that if you want to uh, play with this, you can. So you can sort of multitask while I'm giving the presentation and I'm going to paste in this link in the chat box. So that is up to you if you'd like to click on that one. There's one that we're going to interact with in a bit as well. So um, it's kind of nice because you can move things around. You can group things. Students can contribute what they like. Uh, another one I've used before if for a different purpose is to provide sort of a parking lot for questions, if you've ever heard that phrase, parking lot. So if you'd like to keep track of student questions about something and group them together, uh, you can do that using Padlet. And you can see on this screenshot that I've replied to several of the questions. So for example, down here, I've, I've uh, given an answer to the question. And it's sort of like Facebook in that you can hit the little love symbol or set things up differently there so people can almost vote on different options. Um, and then another one I've done before uh, is a more structured one. And it's something called a Frayer Square that has four specific parts. This one was about assessment. So they had to contribute a definition, essential characteristics, examples, and non-examples. 
And I mentioned that as a more structured format because there are several options that you have in Padlet. You can set things up where things are in kind of a brick format and can't overlap each other um, to um, a grid. Things are arranged in rows and columns. So there's a few options there. So uh, a few ideas for use that I've talked about, the ones that I've, I've shown you are uh, italicized. So you can use it for brainstorming, uh, a parking lot for questions, mind mapping, concept mapping, uh, collaborative note taking, generating questions about an existing map that's been created, uh, anonymous feedback, sorting activities. Some challenges to its use can be that anonymous contributions can allow unkind or off track conversation. Um, potentially, it could be too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. So if you have a lot of different people contributing in one space, it can get a little messy. And there's a limited amount of screen space that you have with Padlet. So what I'd like to do is have us interact with a Padlet I've created for this uh, conference. And we're going to need to think about this screen a little bit because I'm going to navigate away from it in a moment uh, so you won't see it anymore. So our task when we get to this Padlet is to generate a sticky note about either a way in which you think you might be able to use Padlet or a question you have about using Padlet. And just realize when we go there that you can use the like feature or the little love, the little heart here to say that you like a like a question. You also have that question. You like a post and you can comment. So having said that, I want to paste this link in the chat box for you. And we're all going to go there. So hopefully we can get there successfully and navigate back. But here is the link, the bottom one that ends in faculty conference. So if you can click on that link, you are going to end up here at a blank green screen. And when you do that, you can just double click and say you have a question or a comment and write down what that might be. How would I use this? Um, in an in-person class. But you all can type some questions there. Testing. Good ideas. See, and I'm going to like these here just so you see what it looks like. I'm clicking the little heart icons there. I want to take a little time on this one to give people a chance to navigate back and forth since it's the first time we've done that. And I'm just refreshing my screen, don't panic. And see, I can move these around and say, okay, these were just tests of Padlet. So I'm going to group them together over here. Now, as we're continuing to type on there, this is obviously a free, um, a free service. Uh, students, if you want to use it with them, do not have to have an account to contribute because none of you have accounts right now and you're contributing to that. Um, there are, I think, more features you get as a paid subscriber, but I've never paid for the service and have used it in a number of different ways that have worked out pretty well. Uh, oh, and then I see an answer to the question. How would I use this in an in-person class to test vocabulary building? That's cool. Just want to give you another maybe 30 seconds or so if you're waiting to contribute on there or check it out. Double click anywhere on the screen and just add a quick comment. I'm going to hit refresh one more time because I think I have this open in a few places just to make sure I'm seeing all of the contributions. So perfect. And then if you're watching this screen right now and you're wondering how to navigate back to your um, to your collaborate session, if you find the tab at the top of your um, your browser that has a little purple square with a little blue arrow on it, that's going to get you back to collaborate at this point, which is where I'm going to head. But you can multitask in the background while we're um, continuing to talk. If you'd like to add to that Padlet while we're continuing here, that's A-OK. -okay. 
So the next tool I wanted to introduce you to was Quizlet, and a few of you said you had heard of this. Um, it is an interactive flashcard site, and you can either pre-populate the site with some terms and definitions that you have, or you can have students do that themselves. And this little screenshot shows you a Quizlet I put together quite a while ago when I taught a ninth grade um, physical science. And so this one's about the periodic table and chemical bonding. Um, and there are different ways that you can use those flashcards just by learning. They, they give you the definitions and terms together. Flashcards where you can sort of flip things over. Um, writing and spelling tasks. There's a test it'll create for you. A matching thing and then this game. So as we've done just previously with these, uh, I'm going to put this link in the chat box for you and you can explore this as I'm doing the same thing or watch me explore either way. So let me come back to the chat one more time. There's the link to the Quizlet. I'm going to pull it up myself while you're clicking on that link. And then there's a few things that you can try here. Uh, you can try just the flashcards themselves if you like. Uh, but the flashcards are kind of neat because they um, have a little flipping action on them. So I'm reading this definition of vertical up and down column in the periodic table. I click the card, it flips it over and I can re review what the correct answer is and go on to the next card. If you'd like to try a different option, you can click back over here on the left. And another option I'll show you is one where you can match up terms and their definitions. So that one, uh, yeah, I want to start it. I have to find the thing that matches up with, for example, the outermost electron shell in an atom. I know is the valent shell. So I'm going to drop that there and they disappear. And then let me do one incorrectly. Uh, this one doesn't match here. So nope, won't let that one go away. And then the other kind of fun one is uh, the, the gravity game for Quizlet. So that one basically has um, these little asteroids that, uh, that come down from the top, and you've got to type the correct answer before the asteroid hits the planet at the bottom. So this one says, a uh, characteristic of a material that cannot be observed without chemically changing the material chemical property. Let's see if I get there. Ooh, so I got some points, 170 points. I'm going to type an incorrect answer on this one. So let's say um, neutron is incorrect. Oh, asteroid's still coming. So there's a few little fun options there. There's um, another cool feature of Quizlet, um, and this is still free as far as I know, but you can uh, upload pictures and create hotspots on the picture and then have people interact with it in the same way. So this one's kind of fun. I'll paste the link if you want to explore it as we're continuing to talk. I'm not going to spend much time on us discussing beef cuts, but if you would like to check it out as we're talking, we can definitely do that. So the link to that particular one is right there. So having said that, some ways that you can use Quizlet, you can create your own term and definition list and populate Quizlet and let students go to that site to review. Um, sort of a higher level task would be to assign students particular flashcards for their own review that meet certain criteria. Uh, they can set goals for themselves because Quizlet keeps track of percentages correct, commonly missed items, areas for further review. And the other nice piece is that it does give you immediate feedback. It tells you if you have things correct or incorrect. Some of the challenges for Quizlet can be that it may not promote higher order thinking really unless you um, uh, give students sort of processing to do to create their own flashcards. It really is kind of a memory thing. Um, it's subject to spelling errors. So for example, that gravity game that I showed you, if you uh, misspell something, it's wrong. So that could be kind of off-putting sometimes for, for students. So I want to show you a couple features of Google Docs. Um, and it looked like most of you had experience with Google Docs. Um, the screenshot I have right here is just uh, one way I've used it with students in a university environment to have an ongoing brainstorm. So this one was they've got to do a portfolio to show competencies before they, they get their certificate. And I asked them to go to this uh, brainstorm and list some possible artifacts. And then the next time we came to an in-person class session, I pulled up this list and we talked about some of the artifacts. But I've got one I'm going to uh, send you a link to here in a second in the chat box. And I want to show you a couple features that you may not have been aware of in Google Docs before. 
One is the suggest mode of Google Docs, and the other one is uh, helping or using Google Docs to help you research. So I'm going to ask that we go to this Google Doc, and I'm going to show you how we're going to participate in that. So here comes the link for the Google Doc for you. And when you click on that link, you're going to get to this document. We're going to see a few people show up now. You can always tell in the upper right-hand corner when other people are adding into the Google Doc, a little icon shows up that shows that you're anonymous. So this one's a little tricky because each one of you needs to click on this to activate it on your screen. But if you see where my mouse is right now, there's a little pencil. And so you're going to click on that on your screen, and you're going to switch to suggesting mode. So you'll see that I've done it on my screen because it shows up green. Until your shows up green, you're not in suggesting mode. So just click on that little, that little pull down and make sure that you have suggesting mode selected. And what this kind of is, is it's like a, uh, the comment feature in Microsoft Word. So let's say that um, I wanted them to tell me what kind of students I would say, tell me what kind of students. And it shows up on the side kind of like a comment that says maybe you should add this. Or maybe I want to say motivated isn't the right word, so I highlight it and I say, hmm, not sure if motivated is the right word. So feel free to click in there and, and try some things yourself. You know, either highlight something and, and make a suggestion to change it. This is a a uh, somewhat weak writing sample, so there's plenty you could look at, although just playing around in there and clicking and typing is serving the same purpose, so feel free to play with that a bit when you have it on suggested. You can see sort of how it works and what it does. Again, it's similar to the to the comment feature in Microsoft Word. Um, it, it's if you've used Google Docs before with students collaboratively, one challenge is that if everybody goes in and edits, you don't really know what was there originally, and you've got to go back through different versions. So this is a nice, a nice thing to do instead. So I'm seeing a few people commenting on here, deleting the space. Maybe we can find fiction as well. So great. The other really cool thing that I like about Google Docs that I actually just discovered, um, maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, was the research aiding feature of this. So let's say I come down here and I'm reading this, this critical literature review, and I go, hmm, I feel like they could use some research there. Or I'm typing this myself and I'm saying, hmm, I wonder what research there is about critical literature review. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to right click on it. And then I'm going to say explore critical literature. And when I do that, a box is going to pop up on the right hand side that has information from the web. It may have um, uh, actual scholarly articles. It's got some other links about what a critical literature review is. So you can try that on your own, too. It won't show up on my presenter screen, but you could highlight on some term. And again, the way it works is just highlight the term, right click on it and say explore vocabulary. It's a nice feature for students if they need additional um, uh, additional uh, citations or references for a topic or want to dig a little bit deeper into a topic. So it's kind of a nice feature and hopefully something you hadn't seen before in Google Docs. So I'm going to switch back to the presentation again, but feel free to kind of multitask and keep typing in there as I do that. Um, so Google Docs, kind of a summary here talked about research. You can use it for collaborative brainstorming. Uh, you can have peers review each other's work the same way um, that we just did by going into suggest mode. Um, you can use it to assist with research as we just showed. Uh, collaboration and suggestions mode. Also there's a voice typing feature uh, that, that you can use for accommodations for particular students who might need that. Um, let's see, I see a question, does it only work with English or other languages as well? I've not tried that. So you might, you might try that if you have a few minutes and let me know what you find out. I haven't, haven't tested that before. Um, I've got translations to another language. That's sort of the Google Translate feature, which is somewhat related to what you're talking about, but I'm not totally sure. Uh, challenges. Students don't need a Google account to use Google Docs, but then the work shows up as anonymous. So if you're trying to track contributions that way, it can be a little bit challenging unless you have them sign in. 
Um, also the too many cooks in the kitchen idea. Um, I've used this collaboratively with students with maybe three or four in a group. I think when you start getting a little bit bigger than that, it starts getting a little unwieldy. And I'm sure if you personally have used Google Docs, you've encountered some formatting issues or changes if you need to move from Microsoft Word to Google Docs or vice versa. So that's that one. Uh, lastly, I want to show you MindMap, which it looked like none of you had heard of before. And it is a free concept mapping tool, um, which could be used individually by students, collectively, or you could pre-populate. So let me uh, copy this one in here. This one also might be a bit tricky because sometimes it asks you to install an extension. So if that's the case and you have issues, no worries. We can just kind of follow along here and I can show you what, uh, what features are there. So there's the link to the document for that. And what you will find when you go there uh, is this particular uh, mind map that I've started, this concept map that I started. And I thought I would create kind of an easy types of food one. Um, and just real quickly, some of the features there. Um, if I wanted to add on to this type of food and list a specific type of food, I'd click on this little button here in the upper left corner. It says insert child nodes. Maybe I put Italian food here, right? Um, and then I click on this and I want to add something else to it. And I say Mexican food. So we can add on to the concept map that way. I can also just add things and then connect them later. So I've got my mouse over this insert root node button. And I say, well, what if we want to talk about breakfast, lunch, and dinner instead of actual, you know, different types of ethnic food? So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then maybe I want to connect that to something else. So I say, oh, I want to connect it to types of food. So you can do things that way. It's kind of a neat little mind mapping tool that you know, you could use in a number of ways um, that we can actually I'll review as you all are playing there. Some of the ways that we can actually use that. Um, back up there. Uh, you can use it for collaborative work, note taking, meaning making over time for some complex ideas. This one's pretty good for uh, complex thinking more than something like Quizlet. Uh, you could use it for individual work requiring students to synthesize multiple sources of information. Individual work requiring students to analyze a text or an idea. Uh, giving students ideas and letting them connect as they wish. Uh, students can critique or ask questions of peers' mental maps. You could use it for storyboarding or project planning. Some of the challenges for using this are that the products really vary across students. So scoring may be a challenge if that's a desired outcome of using that. Um, also, the too many cooks in the kitchen idea, I would say groups of three and four would be kind of the max for that, but it could also be an individual individual student idea. So that is what I had planned to talk to you about. Um, I'm glad to take questions either in that panel discussion, uh, you know, at 745 when we talk later, or I'm happy to entertain emails if you have specific questions that you'd like to chat with me about further. So. Thanks for attending. I hope you've got an idea you can take with you and incorporate in your classes. Uh, Letha, did you have a question? Oh, uh, yes, I know that they're recording each of the sessions and the, and the links will be made available later. So, yes, the link.